David Flint, and I'm interviewing Rick Brown, who was the director, the director for ACM in Victoria, but also our de facto, certainly very effective national strategist. And if you watch these videos, you'll see why he was in that position. But uh, he also edited, and editing is a big job. He also edited a major tool in that campaign, and that was the No Case Papers with such different people as the former Chief Justice of Australia, Harry Gibbs, and uh, the former Governor General and former Leader of the Opposition, the Honourable Bill Hayden. It was a really a remarkable feat to bring those together and to edit them and use them in that part of the campaign where people would be impressed by that sort of thing. My final question relates to what is happening. And we know that we know that uh, the Republic, as I think many of us anticipated, as an idea, has declined in support, so much so that the latest poll, the latest poll indicates that only 34% nationally now have some support for the vague idea of a republic. And we also know from experience that that would fall significantly in a referendum after they'd heard the arguments and they knew they were going into the real decision. But the other thing is that there is a time bomb there that the young are registering uh, something like uh, only 20 something percent support for a republic and they are the strongest supporters of constitutional monarchy. The result is that having for 20 years had a, a program, had a program of having no model, they wouldn't tell us what their model was, whether it was a secret model. I think they were really trying to form an alliance with the real Republicans so they wouldn't have a division among Republicans. They've abandoned their policy of having plebiscites. They're going to have two plebiscites or even three plebiscites before the referendum using the old European uh, community, European Union policy of keep on voting till you get it right. <laughs> and people would be voted, they'd be voting until they finally were forced into uh, voting in favour of Republic. They obviously don't understand Australians in that regard. But what I think they're going to come up with, this is my prediction, and they say they'll do it this year, they're going to come up with a model, I think, in which there'll be an elected president, which will upset people like Bob Carr, who and Paul Keating, who don't want that, but an elected president absolutely stripped of any powers whatsoever, no reserve powers, nothing. That person will just be a, a president without any powers. Instead of having the president they were going to have, uh, that the prime minister could uh, more easily sack than sacking his driver. So uh, my first, uh, just a, a couple of questions. Do you think there will be another another referendum? And if so, how do you think that model would go? Uh, well, I can't get to the second question, David, because uh, I think you have to start with the first one. Uh, you know, will there be uh, another vote? And uh, I think the honest answer to that is that uh, we don't know. Those who are supporting the S side essentially are philosophically liberal. And at the heart of philosophic liberalism is what unlimited faith in progress. Call, what we would call small L liberal. Yes, yeah, or, or I call philosophic liberals. Um, and at the at the heart, there's two things at the heart of liberalism, uh, and that is individualism and unlimited faith in progress. Uh, the difficulty with unlimited faith in progress is that one makes assumptions about the future. Uh, you know, it's very easy to succumb to the idea of the of the inevitability of one's ideas. And I think that's been a problem for the S side. They've simply assumed that uh, the virtues of a republic are self-evident and that sooner or later the population will come to their senses and will see the light, uh, which they may or may not. But um, the difficulty with that sort of proposition is an assumption. And they give sort of face that assumption by what I call wishful thinking. Uh, well, 
no, no, nobody will vote for a republic if Prince Charles is king. Um, the republic's finished because uh, because of, look at look at what happened to Diana. Um, the republic's finished because of uh, you know look at the way Harry and Meghan are being treated. Uh, the, the, the monarchy is finished. Yeah, uh, yes, yes, the, uh, the monarchy should say yes, the same with the, the same with Charles. The monarchy. Yeah, yes, yes. Yeah. It, uh, These are all silver bullets for the. Uh, well, 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 yes. Uh, it, it's a it's. It's a superficial argument. That's the problem. The fact is, Prince Philip's funeral has blown Megan out of the water. It's as simple as that. Yeah. Uh, because the people are now invited to contrast his humility in terms of accepting the, the compromises and sacrifices of doing the job as compared with, say, Megan, for example. You can't control that. Uh, the um, the Queen soldiers on, uh, and people have seen her age as a liability. But in fact, the long the longer she goes, the more it becomes an asset. Uh, you, you, there's a, there's a world which is increasingly uncertain, increasingly unpredictable. So you you then deal with uh, with the Queen, and as I said, and I mean, she's just the, the sheer constant in everything. Uh, so, uh, my answer to your question is, uh, I'm not sure there will be another vote, is the answer. Would you hold it, uh, if you were the Prime Minister, would it be held if they saw opinion polls as bad as the one that came out on Australia Day, which is just the culmination of a trend? It's been a trend well, down. I think, um, well, I mean, the, the, just the, the, the entries you wouldn't. Uh, but... Um, as I said, uh, you'd simply look at the time. If you said to me now, um, is there a clear, uh, overwhelmingly winning strategy for the yes side? The interest is not. Does that mean that in some circumstances the yes side couldn't win? Well, no, it doesn't mean that. Um, but as of today, um, to you, you, you see the difficulty is you've got to do two things. Um, you've got to put together a proposition which will actually coalesce your own side, and that's getting harder and harder. Uh, but then you've also got to got to find a way of convincing people this issue actually matters. I, I think that's actually the more difficult. I mean, the problem, the problem, when we ran the thing 20 years ago, I mean, what, what we were really saying is uh, to people, do you really take this seriously? You know, do you, have you got the spare time to sit down and gaze at your navels the way this crowd has? <laughs> and, the, uh, and, and, and people said, no, we haven't. So yeah. fine. <laughs> the, what, what do you think of the, the fact that the founders introduced this element of direct democracy into the constitution that you had to go to the people to change for a constitutional change. I mean, I think there's less trust for politicians now than what there was 20 years ago. Uh, the um, is that and, justifiable? Sorry, is that justifiable? Well, I'd have thought so. Uh, the um, I, I I think I think you know, that, that if you could, it, it doesn't matter what model you contrive. Um, it's susceptible to the argument that you're handing it over to politicians. Yes, and it does. Uh, you know, it doesn't matter what model you contrive, and the um, and when you when you put up a president that that, that literally doesn't do anything, um, well, uh, I mean, it's easy to you, it's easy to run a case against that. Which is what answer. I think. I think that's the one they'll push. Well. I may be wrong, but I think that's what they're going to come up with. But the other thing I think is uh, constitutional monarchists think it's going to come from the Labour Party because uh, the Labour Party has it in their platform. But I can foresee in the future some Liberal Prime Minister might well decide that this is the thing to do. Uh, what's got to be, This is why uh, 
the distinctions between cultural campaigns and political campaigns matter. It sounds pretty esoteric, but it's not. Uh, yeah, I'm back, to, I'm back to the results of 99. The votes in Melbourne, Melbourne Ports, Kuyong and Higgins were comparable. Why would not a campaign come from a prime minister representing Higgins? I mean, if, leave aside where you stand on the issue of the gay marriage plebiscite. The fact is that a key organiser of the yes vote for that plebiscite was the then member for Higgins. It's a it's a cultural mindset. Yes. Of, of, of course, of course, it could just as easily come from the liberal side, just as easily. Mm. Yes, that, that's that's quite so. Yes. Mm. Well, I think we have. Uh, I think Australia as a constitutional monarchy is trying to remain in existence. It probably will, and uh, I, as long as it's somewhere likely to be raised by politicians at some time in the future, they still have, they still have in the federal parliament and in the New South Wales state parliament, a friends of an Australian head of state. They call, yes. they, won't, they won't call it friends of an Australian republic, they call no. it friends of an Australian head of state. And as you know, that well, we mounted a very strong legal argument that in yes. fact, the governor general is yes. the head of state. And certainly in terms of international law, where the term comes from, the Governor-General is very clearly the Australian it's, head of state. The difficulty they've got, David, said, with, you know, when you're dealing with culture, there's always competing issues. I mean, if people, if activists have got a choice between going out and campaigning over animal rights and going out and campaigning over a republic, where are they going to go? Well, I think... I think amongst the activists is probably more heading out to campaign over animal rights, uh, regardless of what you think of animal rights. Uh, no, the, no. The, there's, yeah, more, there's certainly more out campaigning over um, climate change and all the rest of it. The, so animal rights and transgender might be seen to be more important than... Uh, not might be. Ah. I mean, let's deal with the present tense. Hmm. In terms of the present tense, I have got no doubt the answer to the question is yes, they are. Yes. And, uh, of course, there is the view that a lot of these ideas which come from America really reflect the, the, the view, the, uh, the realisation that a communist society will never be achieved by the rising of the proletariat because they're far too conservative. Yes, yes, yes. So they, had to, they had to find somebody else, some other group who felt outraged by the present situation and therefore would rise in, re in revolt. Um, but there's no need to revolt, though, if you occupy, if you march through the institutions. Well, uh, th this brings us to Gramsci. Uh, the, um, and, uh, I mean, Gramsci was, I would think, the greatest of the communist theoreticians. Uh, the... Um, and I mean, he's been vindicated with his thesis on the lo the long through the institutions. Yes. Uh, yeah, well, well and truly vindicated. Yes. Uh, but uh, and and you can see it. You can see it in things. You know, I mean, animal rights. I mean, the foundation for that is animal rights courses in universities, for example. Mm. Uh, the you know, if one looks at uh, the environmental movement and what the what the foundations for that are, you, you can see it. Uh, but um, but those. But issues like environment, like climate change, you know, like animal rights, uh, increasingly, um, well, increasing, increasingly on the sexuality issue, we're, we're well beyond transgender. We're now into gender identity, gender change. Mm -hmm. uh, and I, I think that you know, all these issues compete against each other for space, for support, for resource. And I don't think the Republic is keeping up with the others. Particularly no. if, the, if the young are not registering the support, as shown in the latest opinion polls. They don't seem to be interested. Well, but, but why would you be? Exactly. You see, I mean, it, how, how does it impact on your daily life? Because the Queen doesn't exactly interfere in their lives, does she? Well, I mean, it just, I mean that's, that's the practical question. 
I mean, how does it? I mean, these other issues, people believe that these other issues do impact. Yes. That, that's the problem the Republicans have got. Well, I think uh, you've given us an enormous amount to think about, and uh, I do hope that if there is another Republican campaign, you would be available <laughs> on a similar role in that. But thank you very much, Rick Brown, our, our uh, prominent national strategist and uh, head of the Victorian campaign, our most difficult. David, no, thanks, thank David. Thank you very much. No, no, thanks, David. Thank you. It's a pleasure.